I am up here in the attic doing some repairs to some broken trusses. You'll see here there's some new wood has been applied to the sides of the old existing wood. This attic is about 40 years old and we're fixing some issues to restore the strength so it can continue to hold the roof up. Here's why we're doing it. This is an example of a couple of issues with this truss. The top cord has a splice and these connector plates. And these connector plates have let go. There was an impact on this roof about a year ago from a roofing company that were a little heavy handed throwing their materials around. So we had to contact an engineer and we did an assessment. We found that substandard wood was used to build these trusses and it couldn't withstand the impact forces of people jumping on the roof doing their thing. So now we have to repair everything. When I first went to YouTube, I found a little bit of info, but not enough to get this job done. So I've had a few experts called in, and we'll talk about all the steps we've had to take to find out how to fix this roof. So today I'm going to show you how to repair one of these trusses, and then after that we're going to get into a bunch of other videos on safety, on engineering, getting building permits, and how to conduct these repairs so that you don't cause more damage to yourself or to the roof in the process. Here we can see some of the issues. The top cord splice has let go. This piece of wood now is deformed downwards. It's deflected. And these gusset plates that hold the web members that connect the top cord to the bottom cord that forms the ceiling of the house, these are not even connected anymore. They've totally let go. So this is a situation that needs to get fixed. We're going to fix this truss last as an example. And today we're going to fix another truss that has similar issues, although not quite as bad. And that, that is over here. So this is truss number... Two, three, four, five. This is truss number six in this attic. Here we have the connector plate that joined this splice is completely fallen off. I found it in the insulation. Now it is possible to peel this piece of wood off, take this plate and actually hammer it back in, but that's not going to help because it's just going to fall out very quickly. And the effort of hammering stuff sideways against this truss is going to cause us more issues that it can solve. So in this case the connector plates come completely off. It's now garbage. It's not going to be used. This gusset plate here, pardon my camera work, is working itself loose. There's an air gap in here and same thing on the back. In order for us to fix this truss my apologies for the camera work again. It's very tight quarters up here in the attic. In order to fix this truss, we need to sister this top cord with some new 2x4. So this is an 8 foot 2x4. It is a select grade and we'll talk later on about all of the grades that the uh, engineer had to specify for this. And what's going to happen is we're going to put a new one on this side and a new one on this side and that's going to splice this joint and hold it like a splint. It's going to make it much stronger than it was before. There's no way for us to reconnect the, connect, the uh, connecting plates at this splice. But we can salvage this gusset plate. It's still very firm, still holding the web members. But we need to get it tight to the wood so that when we put our new wood over top it's as close as possible to the existing wood. We don't want this huge gap in there. So first job is to tighten up this gusset plate so that we can get our 2x4 and our 2x3 that we're going to sister this with as close as possible. So I'll show you how I did that. It is possible to do it with a hammer. The problem with the hammer is we're pushing this back in. We're not, we don't need it to hold anymore. We're going to fix it with some new wood. 
but the hammer is applying forces sideways and we don't want that. Besides, if we pound on one side, the other side has a tendency to pop out. So we need to squeeze both sides together. So I'm going to use an 8 inch clamp for that. And what I'm going to do is go to the area where it has, it's already tight and I'm going to work towards the edge, start in the, starting in the middle. Now this is not a permanent fix. This is going to tighten this up for now, long enough for us to get the new wood over top. But we're not going to just do this and then walk away. That's not going to do the job for us. Now this is 40 year old wood. You're going to hear it start to creak and crack. Back when this wood was green, when they first made the truss, the connector plate and in this case the gusset plate would have held because the wood was still kind of wet and very soft. Now by forcing stuff into it, it's actually damaging the wood and it's not going to be useful for much, but we just need to get it flat. so that it stays out of the way. One more should do it. It's very tempting to just grab the hammer and go for it. But I have to tell you, I tried that and it just made the damage worse. There we go. So now this gusset plate is fairly tight and it'll stay flush to the old wood while we put the new wood on. Now before we put the new wood up there, I need to notice something. Let's see if we can see this. There are nails sticking through the plywood. These are the nails that are holding the shingles on. This is normal and it's also rather dangerous. If there are any nails up here where we want our new piece of wood to go, those nails have to be removed. If there is a nail here, there was one here at one point, and I put a piece of 2x4 here and I push it up, the nail's not going to go into the 2x4, it's easier for that nail to push through the plywood, through the shingle, and deform the shingle, maybe even cracking it, and now you're going to have a leak. So now we need to make sure there's no nails, at least the width of the 2x4, and this is an 8 foot 2x4. So I've already cleaned these nails out, but I'm going to demonstrate how I did that.